Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Hope you had a great weekend, Dr. Abati. Yes, yes. How yes. are you? I'm good. I have some inside story about you. We'll discuss it during our meeting. You yes, know that. Yes, good, yes. good morning, Ayo. How are you? Good morning. Perfect. Look at his face. Good morning, Rufai. How are you? Good morning. Okay. Perfect. All right. That was a I green. I have some inside story about You don't have us. any. We were hanging out over we're the weekend. We were hanging out on Saturday. <laughs> Rufai. So Rufai. Yes, well, I wanted to, uh, you know, actually commend Visayo, your show your mm -hmm. for that brilliant, brilliant documentary yes. and, you know, finding out and having that whole cartel, mm. you know, exposed babies in Nigeria are being sold. I mean, we hear this yes, across the globe. I mean, we've factual. seen this type of thing across the globe. But, I mean, I think the, the, the problem is really about our system. I mean, how hard can it be? Because I watched that documentary, 20 Minutes, there was, a t there was a woman who actually tried to get a baby and she was saying she wasn't going to do anything um, illegal. She, she um, waited for two years and they frustrated her. That really upset me. I just wanted to know your thoughts. Yes. I like you mentioned, the first thing that came to my mind having watched that documentary was systemic failure. Yes. Right from the point where he was able to obtain fake documents to prove his identity, to him going to the um, orphanage, the fact that these orphanages don't have any form of, well, doesn't seem to have forms of um, regulation. Yes. And last year, one James, o um, Mr. James, Honorable James Owola, being in the House of Representatives, yes. had sought to create an agency with a mandate to coordinate and regulate all orphanages across the country. So we don't have anything currently that does that, yes. as we have in other parts of the world. And then he got into, you know, got to the place very easy. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that there were um, officials, state actors that were complicit, the yes. police, the judiciary, it. it couldn't have worked if they didn't have some form of complicity because you had to have that documentation mm -hmm. from the courts and from the police. So these things show that there's a real systemic failure. Where do we begin to fix it? It's unfair. It's enough to give one a, you know, to, but we have to start somewhere. It's we unfair. Well, I am somewhere. glad that the baby is safe. Yes. Isn't it safer? And uh, Fusayo says that he will, you know, be granted access to the baby and hopefully she will get a good home. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, the death toll from a raging wildfire that swept through a historic town on the Hawaiian island of Maui climbed to 93 on Sunday, making it the deadliest U.S. wildfire of the past century. The inferno swept through the centuries-old town of Lahania on Maui's west coast touching hundreds of homes and turned the lush tropical area into a moonscape of ash. The state's governor, Josh Green, predicts more bodies will be found. In Nigeria, the overseer of the Citadel Global Community Church, Pastor Tunde Bakari, on Sunday urged President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to kill corruption in the country and not Nigerians by going after organizations and individuals who plundered trillions of Naira for petrol subsidy. He also described the trial of the suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin M. Efele, in the hands of the Department of State Services as nothing but Tinubu's political vendetta. The handling of the Mefele case has sent a signal to the world that the current president disposition to the war against corruption is primarily motivated by a clampdown on perceived political adversaries while various other enemies of Nigeria remain untouched. Mr. President, if you are truly on the side of the poor, if you are serious about the welfare of the people, if you truly want the poor to breathe as you once said, then kill corruption and not Nigerians. Under sports, British Nigerian boxer Anthony Joshua defeated Robert Hellenius by a knockout in their heavyweight boxing bout at the O2 Arena in London over the weekend. The former heavyweight champion won the fight after he handed his opponent from Finland a brutal punch in the seventh round. With the triumph, the 33-year-old boxer scored his first knockout win since December 2020 when he defeated Bulgarian Kubrat Pulev in a WBA, IBO, IBF and WBO title defense. Hellenius required oxygen after the bout but quickly recovered before exiting the ring unaided. Robert Hellenius is, is, is not a move. Oh! 
Finally, on our entertainment, Afrobeat superstar Davido debuted the official music video of Jaye Law by his latest signee, Logo Solori, over the weekend. The 30-year-old star came under fire over a religious sequence in the first 45-second teaser of the song released on July 21st featuring men dancing in front of a mosque. The Muslim community, including the Muslim rights concern, condemned the video, calling on the Department of State Services to investigate the singer, alleging that the video was capable of igniting anarchy in Nigeria, prompting Davido to delete the clip on social media. <laughs> Well, let's begin what's trending. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project over the weekend filed a lawsuit against Senate President Godswill Akpabio and Speaker of the House of Representatives Tajuddin Abbas over the plan to spend 40 billion naira on 465 exotic and bulletproof cars for members and principal officers of the Senate, as well as 70 billion naira as palliatives for new members. The suit is coming on the heels of Godswill Akpabio's statement in which he revealed that the clerk of the National Assembly had sent holiday allowances into the various bank accounts of senators. Serap is seeking an order to restrain Akpabio and Abbas from demanding or receiving the 40 billion naira on exotic cars and other exorbitant expenses until an assessment of the socio-economic impact of the spending on millions of poor Nigerians is carried out in the interest of the public, among other requests. Dr. Vati, you know that Seraph is always doing the Lord's work. I think that this is coming at the right time, as always. Well, I mean, we've been on this matter since yes. early July, and the contest was uh, President Tinubu submitting the Supplementary Appropriation Bill for 2023. Mm -hmm asking for more money to be able to uh, pursue the budget. But in the uh, uh, process of considering that uh, application by the president, the uh, National Assembly then decided to add 110 billion of their own to it. Mm. This 110 mm. billion has been defined variously, mm. either as palliatives for the lawmakers, 109 of them in the Senate, 360 of them, in the uh, House of Representatives. And uh, you recall that Femi Fallon or SAN had issued a statement at the time saying that it was illegal, insensitive, and contemptuous. Mm -hmm. At a time of uh, grave crisis and poverty in the country, for 109 plus 360 persons who are supposed to be representatives of the people, claiming that they alone want to take 130 billion uh, to, for palliatives. Now, that's more than the profit declared by the whole CBN of Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> as as uh, recent statements by the CBN has pointed I out. I mean. So, but uh, socioeconomic rights and uh, accountability project set up has also waded into the matter to give further details, to say that in actual fact, these palliatives that is being talked about is meant to buy SUVs, right? Land Rover SUVs for the senators and each one will cost 240 million. Mm -hmm. And to buy Prado, Prado Jeep, for members of the House of Reps, and that, that each one will cost 150 million. And that the leadership of the uh, National Assembly will have convoys, bulletproof convoys, that will be stationed in uh, major capitals, Abuja, Kaduna, uh, Kano, Lagos, just in case they f f show up in those places. So, and now Seraph says it has gone to court. Serap is asking for another mandamus. That is, the court should make it compulsory for the National Assembly not to include that 110 billion in uh, the uh, in the uh, supplementary budget. Serap and both uh, Femi Fala and SCN are also arguing that look, this is a violation of the Procurement Act, and it's also a violation of the fiduciary duties of the uh, lawmakers, and also a, 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 a violation of Section 70 of uh, the Constitution of the Federal Republic. So it's a very controversial issue, but the senators are saying where the money is, to, is for renovation, 
of uh, offices for new members, even if you are renovating offices, are you building a new national That's assembly even complex more frustrating with one hundred and ten billion yeah. naira? I think that the spokespersons of the uh, of the uh, national assembly, apart from the fact that the matter has now been taken to court, although no date has been fixed yet for mm -hmm. hearing, they owe Nigerians an explanation. They need to explain to us exactly what they want to do. Yes. Because there have been some reports that says, oh, this is abishua, that, you know, routinely uh, lawmakers will just award money to themselves mm. and give it all kinds of uh, titles. Kekem Napepe allocation or uh, constituency allowance and all of that. So Nigerians are very suspicious mm -hmm. and it has created a problem of trust yes. with Nigerians. That look, our lawmakers tend to be overworked, uh, they tend to be overpaid mm -hmm. and they are underworked Absolutely. and that they get all the benefits you, all these people too are looking for prayers mm -hmm. they are looking for tokens <laughs> they are looking for palliatives Absolutely. that's why they are protesting in uh, Kano that's why they are protesting in Portacourt that's why civil servants block the entrance to the secretariat in uh, Ibadan that is the truth that is why uh, people took to the streets mm -hmm. in Yola Adamawa State so when they hear that some people want to ride bulletproof cars or they are collecting prayers. Ah, they will say, well, <laughs> we the people, it is let us breathe. Absolutely. And that is the point that you are making. People are asking for help. I mean, like you mentioned uh, Port Harcourt, in the same vein, demonstrators trooped out in their numbers in River State to protest over the cost of living crisis. The protesters were chanting the now famous quote by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, let the poor breathe which they turned into a song. to breathe tinubu allow us to breathe tinubu i mean please let the fire breathe don't <laughs> suffocate them no you see we keep saying this it is righteousness that exalted nation sin is a reproach let's do things righteously the people are suffering and if the senators are righteous enough they will not even ask for that money they're asking for yeah you heard the senator, I think it was Aline Dume the other day that was speaking, I said, hey, it's just two million naira they collected in Tokyo. Just two million naira? These people don't even care about us. They are so insensitive. And they fail to realize the pain a lot of people are going through in Nigeria. The chaos and the avarice. As we're speaking this morning, all marketers are already talking about possibility of 720 naira per liter for petrol price. Hoji, 580 already. People can't buy. Look at the streets. They are empty. People are crying. Companies are laying people off. They are saying, allow them to breathe. Yes. The chaos and the pain is so much in the land. President Tinubu is saying pregnancy pain. Pregnancy pain. See, President Tinubu, do you know that women to die out of labor pain? It gets to a point that a woman will push and then she loses her life. So when you make that expression and say, oh, pregnancy pain, remember there are women too that die as a result of the pain from labor. And they can't push any longer and they lose breasts. There's something called maternal mortality. So is it when you keep people from the pregnancy pain, when will they be alive to enjoy the baby that is being born? And I mean, for women now, they, when the pain gets so much, what do they do? They pump in painkillers. Abby? Yes. This pain is too much. If there's nobody telling you, we are telling you, we are feeling the streets. People are dying from pain. 720 naira per liter now, they are saying, cost of everything is on the increase. There are no jobs. People are doing all sorts. President Tinubu, allow us to breathe too. Don't suffocate us. Yes. You have good intentions for this country. Let the people see the good intention. If you genuinely love the people, start by speaking against this National Assembly. All right. Ayo.
Uh, earlier on my headline, I took the story of Pastor Tunde Bakare. Uh, he mentioned the yes. fact that, you know, uh, Tinubu's uh, the detention of Godwin and Mephile was a personal vendetta. And, you know, uh, you cannot help but say that this is yes. what's happening. He's been there for over, what, 60 days? 60 days. There was another story that is trending, that was trending over the weekend on social media. Uh, the fact, you remember we took a fashion last story where yes. he sued uh, Jackson Uday, reportera.ng yes. as well. And I believe the DSS had moved in to try to um, arrest the owner of uh, reportera.ng. Yes. And they raised alarm that, you know, they had to pick his brother. Let me read a tweet. Update. 80 hours since Chike Ibezim's illegal abduction by DSS, the MD of Ripotera Namdi Uwefi. Ibezim's younger brother, Chike Ibezim, is still illegally detained by the DSS following his petition by Fashola against the indicted trio, including Ripotera. It has been three days since the 30-year-old entrepreneur, who is set to get married in two months, was picked up by the law enforcement agency after meeting the absence of Namdi Ibizem, who they had intended to pick up following the petition by the immediate past minister of works and housing, Babatunde Fashola. What type of country are we living? Don't forget to add the SAN to his name. Because SAN, that's senior advocate of Nigeria. He's a senior advocate yes. of Nigeria, and so should know the law. Um, I'm sure Dr. Bat is here, so I'll defer to him with regards to I don't think you can take another man to pay for the um, to pay the price or to go under investigation on behalf of another. So I'm talking about Mikey Bezim's brother, why yes. he was picked up by DSS. Another criticism for DSS is that we have seen DSS in the last few months take on matters that do not particularly fall under their remit. Even in, including some civil um, cases. Mm. Look at the issue with uh, Mr. Mefiele. That terrorism charge, we are still waiting for it. Yes. At the end of the day, the court has ruled that he should be taken into custodial um, 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 service. But they came in and said they are coming. Are you allowed to arrest or to detain a man in view of a potential charge? Is this what we have um, turned to? I think we need to make so, a, a bit more, you know, just raise up this alarm because what I keep saying is, if we don't do it now, we think mm. it's Mr. Mefiele today, Mike Ibezim tomorrow, Mike Ibezim's brother, it could be anyone tomorrow if we don't so, yes. them, we respect have to, the rule of law. And President Tinubu on his May 29 Nogo speech said he was going to respect the rule of law. He was going to rule constitutionally. Can yes. he keep to his word? That's it. Can he be a man of integrity? And I call on um, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, SAN. It, under, um, with, with, under his direction, with his petition, DSS has acted in his stead. Yes. Can he speak up on, on this matter? He's a senior advocate of Nigeria. He can understand, he does understand what the law says about matters like this. Well said. Well, the All matter right. is off the hands of Febabatunde Fashola SEA. He petitioned the Department of State Service to say that, look, some people, uh, Yoruba Sheikh, Frontera, and Jackson, Jackson Ude, Ude, yes that these persons had caused to be published statements saying that he was helping the presidential election petition tribunal to write judgment. Yes, that's the story. Now, that in itself, if it is uh, true as alleged, is defamatory per se. And he says, look, this is something that can put him at risk. And that he wants the, st the state, right, the police, the DSS, to investigate this and protect him. That, that's all he has done. Maybe it's on the basis of that, that uh, the DSS has now gone to look for the publisher of Fontera. When they could not find him, they picked his brother. Yes. That is what is questionable. Yeah, that's because what, what the about. law yeah. says, what the law says, Section 7 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act mm -hmm. says you, you cannot be arrested in place of another. It's called arrest by proxy I mean, or arrest way. in lieu. Look at this. So you cannot be denied your right to personal liberty under Section 35 for an offense you have not committed. Okay? So that is what is wrong. And the uh, relevant case here is Sunday Odogu versus uh, the state, a 2013 case. So if it is true that another person was arrested because of another person's offense, that's a problem. But they do it. So there's so much impunity within the system, and they get away with it. That's why we should question it Absolutely. whenever it occurs. That's why we should condemn it. Section 36 of the Police Act also does not allow you to just go and pick people up for things that they have not done. 
Wandering is not an offense, for example, in Nigeria. You know they arrest people for wandering. When you have freedom of uh, liber uh, uh, freedom of movement under the constitution, if you like, you, you trek from Lagos to Kano. Wandering is not an offense. Unacceptable. So in this case, Ibezim also, you say, has been uh, uh, detained yeah. for up to 80 hours. Yes, that's what No, that's a violation of his Absolutely. rights. Absolutely. Rufai, quickly. So quickly, quickly please. Uh, we should remember when the rain started to beat us as regards this lawlessness we do in Nigeria. The same DSS has not been able to pick up Azari Dokubo for brandishing firearms. As Mr. Mefele under his custody, he's been charged, he's released on bail, they still picked him up. As Mr. Bauer under his custody. So let's remember, because when the lawlessness and reign of impunity starts, let's remember those that perpetrated it. It's either from President Buhari, because not the, the, today it started. Mm -hmm. President Tinubu, too. Please, you are a Democrat. Under your administration, all of this is happening. All right. Because another person will come tomorrow now and, call, and, and continue this reign of impunity. Mr. Asari Dokubo walks free, claims that he works with government, he has a contract binding, says all sorts, brandishes guns, harasses people, you know, abuses people, defames them, says all sorts of things against them. The DSS just doesn't see that. All it right. is this. Isn't the court supposed to be the one? Since he has petitioned the DSS and all of that, and his lawyers are going to court, then let the court reign on this. All right. We and when we see a lot of oversight by the DSS, that's how you know the DSS too entered mess on mass case. See, let's remember in this country, when this reign of impunity finally starts, let's remember how it started. Because everybody's doing it now. They're enjoying it because they're in leadership, they're in power, they can do it and go scot free with it. But let's remember... At a stitch in time saves nine. Let us remember. Let us make this country fair for all. all right. Let it be an equitable place for all. Not because you are in power today. Power is transient. You are in power today. You will not be in power tomorrow. All right. <laughs> You know, you discussed the protest in Kano earlier. I wanted to highlight that. I mean, we also had uh, people in uh, Nigerians go to the Nigerian embassy to protest as well. I mean, there were stories that, you know, um, the embassy was burnt down, but it was debunked. But that frustration is out there. And it's good that the northern clerics have come out to say that they are going to continue to dialogue. All right, we'll uh, take our final story. In a heartwarming display of celebration, Governor Ademola Adeleke of Oshun State took to the dance floor with players of the Super Falcons, Rashidat Ajibade and Rafiat Umoran, both from Oshun State. The trio danced to traditional Yoruba tunes at the governor's residence in Ede. <laughs> Speaking That's your dancing partner, Rufai. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, he's so. <laughs> he did. He did very well. But I love the fact that he hosted those uh, yes. female athletes. They did very well. I mean, just to note that these people have done us proud. And you know, the government, the governors, everyone yes. should try to, you know, give them more support. Happy man. Yes, he is. he's always giving us good content. Yes. I don't know why he has not opened a TikTok channel. Yes. Yeah, I'm if, trying. If he, if he sets up a TikTok channel, oh God, he will have a lot of followers. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, congratulations to the ladies. To the ladies yeah. as well. And they well need, deserved. yes, yeah, absolutely. Well, all right, you. I'd like to thank, thank you all you. for your great analysis on what's trending today. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.